Peace family, this is Shofar from Full Show Energy Work. Today I'm here to talk to you about six to nine ways to communicate more centrally. On this video, we're going to go over six. Then on my Patreon, I'll have the other three, which gives us nine. You know, three, six, and nine. That's those numbers that Tesla talks about. So let's go ahead and get into it. The final stalk begins. So number one, magnetic and electric, or electromagnetism. Now in the first video, you saw how the cheetah, you know, hunting the gazelle, but if, what did it do first? It stalked it, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes some animals are like an ambusher, right? They just straight wait for something else to come to them. So that's being like in the yin energy or the feminine energy. Again, we're talking energy, we're not talking about gender, Gender is on the physicality or the sensual level, but on the emotional or conscious level, you're in a sensual emotional exchange, right? S-E-X, sensual emotional exchange. So on the, the emotional or the consciousness level, uh, we're talking about uh, polarity now. Polarity, which is energy exchange, right? Non-physical energy, because physical is still energy. So with that being said, when we're in the feminine energy, it's like we're waiting for something to come to us, like the egg, right? And the sperm is in that dynamic electric energy. It's the wave, particle and wave. Quantum physics says the same thing, that we are both at the same time, always. It's really about our awareness. What is the central motion exchange? What is the exchange? Our awareness with our breath, our breath with our awareness. So when we take our awareness into our body, you know, this is the central emotional exchange. The cheetah, then they didn't show that part before it was even stalking. It was just sitting and scoping and which one, okay. And then it saw one and started moving towards it. What? Slowly, slowly. It's not just a, even though that motherfucker can run 60 to eight, I've heard as fast as 80 miles per hour. That's fucking crazy. But you know how much energy is used up in that? You see how, how cheetahs are built, right? They mad slim, you know, so... They also get pumped a lot of times by hyenas and 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 and, and lions. Uh, damn, they're vultures. If there's enough vultures, they can even get pumped. You know, so they give up bulk mass to be able to run so fast. So why am I saying that? They have to even take that into like consideration. Like, okay, are there are there any apex predators around right now? They might jack me for my food. So they move slowly. They pick out something. They take all of this in consideration. And some of the cheetahs, by the way, are getting smart. They're starting to be like lions and, and posse up and have prides, you know, because in order to survive, they're going to go extinct if they don't. Uh, but anyway, so they they start out slow, stalking, and then they they zero. Once they get a certain distance and they, they feel comfortable with it, then they hit the afterburners and run up on them. And that's the, the masculine energy at that point. It's that quick burst of energy. So in the PUA pickup artists community or dating, there's a lot of back and forth, forth and back about, you know, the whole idea of, you know, numbers, you know, just, just getting numbers and, and, and approaching a lot of women. Uh, or it seems to go to the other extreme of, you know, no, use your magnetic energy and choosing signals, making, making eye contact and smiling and, and, and then just waiting for that and what if you never get it so that's the thing it's like well, what if we can mix both of those right They don't, they don't do, do it. it right. Yeah, what, they, they not doing it right out here. No, bro. What, what are they doing? Like they be like, yo, or they like tap you aggressively. Like, what, what the fuck is that? Yeah, that ain't how I do it. Yeah, how you do it? Really like, 
Well, I'm not like every female out here. They get they get chased. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every nigga doing the same shit. So like, to be honest, I believe in like mutual interest. You know what I'm saying? I ain't like you, eye contact type shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, you look at me type shit. We look at each other. And nine times out of ten, if you really want to talk to me, you gonna keep looking. Yeah. So sure. I wait for the keep looking. So are you like once that happens, are you gonna go up to her or? Yeah. Like, so so like so like that? once you keep looking, then I I pretty much like wait uh, type shit. And then if we walk to each other. Not, not none of that me, you know what I'm saying, chasing them. Right, because it's smoother, like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, like, I ain't got time for this shit. Yeah. Neither do sure. they. Yeah. <laughs> so I like the conversation that is also a little different for these. I think probably a six-footer, athletic build, uh, dark skin, and has his face and name out there. His name rings bells now, right, in a certain age group or whatever. And so he's going to probably have a little bit more often than not than the average dude uh, is going to have wound beings giving him choosing signals. So at least the conventional choosing signals. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. So that's just something to take into consideration, not saying that that's not a, a valid thing. I, I mean, if it, and it's working, right? It's on you to be able to do the introspection about what you have going on and then apply it to the game accordingly. Not every creature is like a cheetah to have such a fast burst of speed. So some of them got to get even closer. Think about how a, a spider works. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're totally in their yin energy on that and waiting for something to get into the into the web. They just sitting there until that time. They're not actively going out there. They set a trap. Another creature falls into it, butterfly or some shit or whatever. And then they do what? They take action. They, they use that masculine energy and take action. So it's about, in my opinion, about being both. But let's listen to what Mr. Vicario uh, and uh, forget the other brother, but his name is on the screen. What they have to say about just waiting for choosing signals. A lot of times there's really no incentive for most women to uh, throw you choosing signals anyway. And also when oh, they yeah. do it, it's usually, it's usually really subtle and most of the time you won't pick up on it. And the reason why I say there's no incentive is because this sometimes what happens is women won't want to necessarily make it obvious that they're interested because if you do not approach her, she's going to take that as a rejection. Mm -hmm. So in order to, to, to alleviate that rejection, she won't make it obvious that she's throwing you a choosing signal. So, for example, um, the other day I was at I was at this uh, this like bar slash restaurant and I see this girl. I'm going towards the bar. She's walking away from the bar, so she just got a drink. As I'm going towards her and we're crossing paths, I just say, hey, how are you doing? She's like, oh, hi. And then I just walk past her and get my drink. So as I'm getting my drink and ordering my drink, she stands next to me. I see her walking back to me. She just stood next to me. So I see her at the corner of my eye. I'm like, okay, she wants to talk. So I say, hey, what's going on? And we start talking and interacting with each other. So that's sometimes the most women will do. But, yep. you, but, you, but what happened in that situation is, she probably wouldn't even done that if I didn't even say hi the initial time first. You see what I mean? Most women aren't choosing a large majority of guys. You see what I'm saying? Just in general. Now, the difference between when you're in person and online is that in person you have more to work with. So meaning that you can actually approach a girl in real time, interact with her in real time, and then she might end up liking you based off the energy that's going on in the situation of her, you, you and her back and forth. But either way, off the cuff, most women aren't, choosing a large majority of guys so again for a large majority of guys it's not going to benefit you to just wait around for that and the reason why a lot of guys say they want to wait around for it is strictly based off of the fear of rejection that's really all it's coming from a lot of right. guys have a, a, a extreme fear of rejection you know a lot of right? guys have a, a, a extreme fear of rejection i love what these brothers were saying there uh about waiting for choosing signals all the time it's not going to work for the average guy. And I tend to agree, you know, from my own experience and things like that is like waiting for the, especially the conventional, uh, you know, the conventional uh, choosing signals and that being eye contact, smile, uh, these things. Uh, now these things let you know sometimes when it is a good time to go over, you know, you need to be able to have a feeling in your body and everything and be able to sense where the wound being is at. Sometimes, no matter how bad she is, she just having a bad day, she having a bad day. And don't be so, if it's in your grocery store, like, 
try to make eye contact with her, smile or whatever, maybe even say hello in passing. She don't really give you that energy. Maybe you keep it moving. If it's in the grocery store, the gas station, maybe you see her again. I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a woman being on one side of the town and then I see her on another. You know, so when it's, and I mean, there's a lot of people where I live. So if it's meant to be, you, it, you're run into each other again. Those are some of the conventional, you know, signals, though, choosing signals is, you know, that she makes eye contact. Uh, she's, uh, she's um, smiled at you. Uh, she even comes over to speak to you. You know, that Duke Dennis, that's, that's part of what in that video, uh, when you watch the full version, that happens with him. But if you're not a famous YouTuber or athlete or act like somebody who's ringing bells or whatever, even if you're just an attractive man, a lot of wound beings are not going to be in their masculine energy so strong that they're going to come over and speak to you. They're afraid of that rejection too, y'all. So something to keep in mind, right? So what is another when I say, what is a more unconventional way? Now, some people speak to this, but I'm going to go another level with it uh, that you know, to, to help you maybe, you know, you feel into it if you, what you think. And I'm going to add another, another, uh, another uh, caveat to it, if you will. So first off, the, the, the unconventional thing is proximity. If she's in your space, if you're in her space, and in Hindi, they, the sacred space is the yoni. That's associated with what they call the vagina, right? The yoni. So if y'all are, if you're in her yoni space, which is her physical vicinity, whether it be the grocery store, the laundromat, where, whatever your life has taken you to, um, the beach, wherever y'all are at, the park, and y'all are in the same vicinity through time and space. Now, let me, let's 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 get esoteric with it. Let's get big picture with it. For her ancestors and your ancestors, and you think of all the people that it take to make you and her, her and you, and now y'all are in. A certain area at the same time there's already some type of connection now it might be some randomness on some uh, uh, crash you know the movie crash or whatever or something like that, that you may never know what that connection was because it may not play out that way and that's good that's that's fine don't be so hungry and thirsty out here you know oh 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 Interesting how the predator become, becomes the prey. So another cheetah just getting a drink of water and the crocodile was waiting there in the yen until it wasn't yen no more. Unless we open our mouth, right, and go over and speak, we may never know. So that's what I'm getting at. So the first thing, the unconventional thing is proximity. If she's in your prox approximate area, then going over and speak. So that's taking action, the masculine. So in other words, it's a fusion of both of those things. It's, a bo it's about both of those things, right? It's feeling both of these things come together for you and not just trying to make it one or the other. Uh, and, and for you ladies that are watching, same thing. It's like the crocodile, by the way, is a, is in many cultures, is a symbol of the feminine energy. So... Imagine the, the reptilian, that ancient primal, you know, fucking crocodile has been around since since the dinosaurs. Right. And it's sitting there waiting. Patient. Or maybe not so patient. I don't know what's going on underneath that water. That motherfucker might be mad. But either way, yeah, I mean, they come up like they're mad. They come up like they're very honored. You know what I'm saying? Going back to, to Waterboy. But anyway, um, they come out that motherfucker and. But they they come up. With that strong masculine energy at that last minute, though, before that, though, they're just sitting patiently, you know, within the feminine energy. And so that's the same thing, even with a wound being like, there's nothing wrong with the with you ladies going ahead and shoot your shot, uh, too, and take the rejection on the chin. If the guy, I mean, if you're an attractive woman, a lot of times the guy's going to think about it, even if he has a lady, <laughs> you know. So, but being okay with rejection, and again, one of the things my lady says, she says, rejection 
is redirection. Yeah, man. You doing the video? Oh yeah. Um, you are so handsome. He is. Wow. <laughs> Damn, man. It's nice to meet you, man. It's rejection is redirection. Something. That's a whole nother video. Uh, maybe we'll do that together and everything. But just something to feel into and think about is that rejection is redirection. And so putting that all together is that feminine energy is the magnetism is waiting for things to come to it, like the egg or like the crocodile or even like the cheetah is waiting for one of those gazelles or something to get uh, close enough that it can run up on it, you know, and use its burst of speed. But first is in the feminine energy. It's in that magnetism, right? And then we get electric and then we get masculine and we we take what action and the word action has what at the end ion a ion is a charged particle right so if you watch my webinar uh you'll see that i go into that whole thing about the ions and everything uh the the, the, the exchange of energy again is what central emotional exchange so we're talking about the exchange of energy but it's not one or the other stop trying to separate it from both and yes you got to be able to as a man or the masculine energy, you got to be able to take that, take the, the rejection on the chin, you know, and now you can look for choosing signals to, to give you the, to give you an idea of whether or not she's ovulating or receptive or not. And by ovulate, I don't mean just physically, I mean, energetically, emotionally, is she in an ovulating stage and, uh, where she's going to even be receptive to you. Is she in a fertile stage or whatever, that she's going to be even open to you coming over to speak. So, Yes, checking for for choosing signals is beautiful and powerful, and this does not negate you as the masculine, the person in the masculine energy. Let's say if you're, you're the man or it's you as the womb being, to get over your fucking fear and go over and speak, and maybe you don't go fully in. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you check first at first. It's like, hey, how you doing? Or how's your day going? And then you walk off. You know, if you're getting more things in the in the grocery store, you'd be so, so surprised. Uh, next thing you know, now the, the vicinity is the big thing, is the whole store, right? How you doing? And you walk off. You, and maybe you, she might be in the fog. Maybe you ain't getting no choosing signals because you know what? She thinking about so much other shit right now. But if you're embodied, when you go over and speak, we're going to talk about that in a moment. If you're embodied and in your fucking body and can feel your own energy and you go over and speak directly then guess what you might help her for a moment come out of her head and be like oh yeah hi how you doing next thing you know she's standing next to you in the line or you're, you're going to the car at the same time or something like that and and you're able to have a, a more in-depth connection or conversation so i wouldn't say throw out the choosing signals thing i would say uh, and I wouldn't say rely on that too heavily, is to put both of them together. That's the full show. It's the left and the right hand, Buddha hands. Put both of them in your, and, and realize that you have both of those energies in your hands. Ashe? So number two is about resonance. A big thing that can help with all of this, with the magnetic electric electricity and the electromagnetic energy is to understand resonance. So you saw there with the tuning forks, right? You hit one and then you took it away, but the other one is still vibrating now because they were on a similar. Now this is not going to work if they don't have the same like makeup. If, uh, you know, as far as like how much, how dense they are and if the density is different or whatever. So that, that that's the thing. You're not going to always be universally chosen either. You just get over it. You know, I don't care how handsome or beautiful or whatever you think you are. You're not going to get chosen all the time. Uh, and that's, that's just what it is. And there's so many factors to why that is. It might not even be a physicality thing. It might be, okay, you look like an attractive person, but you don't look like you can fuck. Uh, it might, you look like you can fuck, but that also is a problem because you probably fuck a lot of people, you know, like, 
or it may be something totally look like you don't have any resources. You look broke. You look uh, you don't look fun. Uh, it really, truthfully, there's myriad, infinite reasons why you might not be chosen. Right. So get over that. But what I'm saying is like when we're talking about resonance, it's, it starts with you. How are you feeling? How are you feeling in your body? Are you carrying a frequency of happiness, joy, bliss, you know, fun? You know what I mean? And if you're carrying those energies, if you're smiling, again, uh, Montag Chia, the, in the internal or the, 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 the internal smile, right? If you're smiling with your organs and through your eyes and, and that's being emanated out into the space um, and your s smile is centrally uh, minded, in life every day, essentially minded in life every day, or success minded in life every day, you know, just throwing another acronym out there, you know how I like my acronyms. So if you got that smile about yourself, you got that swag about yourself, and you, you walking in it and everything, and now you're just checking to see who's resonant, who's literally feeling you, literally. And again, if it's, if you're not getting the choosing signal, but you really have but you have chosen, your God has chosen, like, I, I, I want to see how this plays out. Just go say hi. Don't, don't even pressure yourself to say anything more than that. See if you can snap that person out the fog or maybe help them see, like, yo, you, you got a goddess. You got a God in front of you right now. Or a Ra, rather. You got a, a, a Ra being. You know, you got a hue being. Uh, someone of light and love right in front of you. You got a light being in front of you right now. Snap out of that, you know, that Thanos snap out of the, uh, uh, the, you know, use your fucking infinity gauntlet of your, 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 uh, your organs and your, your hormones, uh, or rather your, uh, what I'm trying to say, your glands, damn, your glands and help snap that motherfucker out of that shit to see who's, you know, just, and, and you just do that by vocalizing the, you, the raw in you just goes over and speaks like, Hey, how you doing? And then walk off. You'd be surprised how that might, they checking for you now. Like, you ain't even try to go all the way in. You just did that to snap them out and then keep it moving. You all, and that's another thing. And I, I'll, I'll go bring it back to the energy thing. But, but this is a frequency, right, that you want to be carrying. Always date Kim. Who is Kim? K-I-M. Keep it moving. Don't get so fixated. Don't get so, 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 so hungry and, 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 and and, and attached and like this only like, and you need to be carrying that frequency, like, you know, not on some pride shit, you know, so overdoing the masculine energy, not on some doubt shit, you know, with the feminine energy and, and, and doubting oneself. It's like with self confidence, confiding in self and who you are and connected to and knowing that you are a divine being, you, 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 you go over and you speak and you say, and you, you're checking for resonance. Not resumes. Fuck all, you fucking res. You know, like it's interesting how we put each other on auction blocks and shit. But you're chucking for resonance to see if this being can even your level of consciousness and your level of embodiment. If that's even a match, sensually, you know what I'm saying. So number two is resonance. And if you feel that your partner, either of you, wavers, gets lost, smack him to teach him to stay present because your life depends on it. And the reason we're doing this is because what men trust in men and what women trust in men is their capacity to remain present through thick and thin. Every time you're distracted by anything, your value as consciousness diminishes. All these men have just come back from war. That's how they feel anyway. It's like, ah, oh, <laughs> the world, the job. You know, so, and they came back from war, and you are here to heal their heart, to make their heart feel, wow, life does have beauty. Life is a mysterious, wonderful, juicy place. So offer them that gift. Now, first of all, all the men who are single, raise your hand. If you're single in this room and would enjoy going on a date with her, raise your hand. Okay, all of you with your hands raised, come on up front. <laughs> This could be like a third stage dating game kind of thing. So you get to ask them one question. And here's the question. If I were your woman, what would you do with me tonight? 
okay? So ask each of them that question and let's find out their answer. If I were your woman, what would you do with me tonight? I'd take you home and run the bath for you, open a bottle of wine, and sit down and have a talk about tonight. <laughs> and I'll put the electric blanket on and <laughs> get a bit warm. Okay, that's good for now. On to the next one. <laughs> if I were your woman and we went home tonight, what would you do for me? Mm, I talk. Okay, stop for a second. Now, just for added enjoyment, why don't all the women here make whatever sound you're feeling while the men are responding? <laughs> so, so uh, keep talking. Good luck. <laughs> and, and ladies, just make whatever sound you're feeling while this guy's talking. Go ahead. What would you do with her tonight if you went home with her tonight? She was your woman. Disqualified. On to the next one. Okay, same thing, just immediately. So I'll ask the question for you. I want to open to God so bad. I lost a relationship about a week ago. I'm not quite sure I want to be in a relationship, but I'll, I, I think I do. I think I do. Maybe if you're the right one. The only way I know if you're the right one is if you would open me to God tonight. So tonight, if I were your woman, what would you do to me? I'll look into your eyes and get to know you and see where we're going. Oh, you're <laughs> this guy's ready to sit down already. <laughs> I'd love you till you didn't need to be loved anymore. Sound? I would love you until you didn't need to love anymore, till you were loved. Got a mixed response. Sounds better than the last two. Okay, you two in the middle can sit down. Okay, it's just between these two now. No, this guy didn't have the opportunity to have the ladies feel bad. So why don't we give him the opportunity? So let's make this question more specific. Now there's only a few of you, you could actually, you could face both of them, okay? You're gonna open her to God tonight. If you don't, I'm gonna kill you. You tell her how you're gonna open her to God tonight. And ladies, make your response as he speaks. Okay, we'll take you home, we'll put on the heater, I'll get to you. <laughs> you tell me you've got um, some, some aches, so I'll get the massage table out, and I'll get some oil, and I'll start massaging you. <laughs> you guys, you ladies have to be much more expressive. Is that a good sound or a bad sound? The thumbs are down, I'm sorry, friend. Okay, one last time with this guy. Ahead. So, you're going to open her to God tonight. If not, he's going to kill you. <laughs> How are you going to open her to God tonight? How? Uh, slowly. <laughs> <laughs> so far, you're so good. Uh, glass of wine. Sit down. Talk. <laughs> Learn to know who we are, each other, who we are. Learn to know who you are. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> and how are you going to open her to God tonight? <sighs> uh. <laughs> Is he doing it already? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you don't need to say anything. You could try just to see if you blow it by speaking. <laughs> Three is presence. And that's an old school video you saw there, like, you know, David Dita. I've heard his book, the, uh, I've heard of it, you know, I've heard many men talk about many, many men. I've heard many men, though, talk about the superior, the way of the superior men, or the, the way of the superior man. And uh, I've never read it myself, but it sounds like a dope book. So, but from just that little exercise that we saw there, that's powerful. And why did it work that way? Why? Why was she not feeling the mother dudes and the, and the you hear the women in the group? Like, they're like, oh, ah, ooh, you know, I'm going to run the water. 
And this is what hurts so many dudes. I think this is what happens with the MGTOW and all of that. And, and, and you feel so bad about it. Like, she's, all of that is stuff that we think as men, you might, might even been programmed by your mom or by some dumb shit. You know, some woman that you, you know, like they, they, they're saying these things publicly. But if you, when you go on my webinar, you, you've heard me say before, when they say one thing publicly, they say another thing pubically. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? You need to be able to hear her, you know what I'm saying? And be able to hear what her breast is saying and to be able to feel that inner, the, 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 the freak, right? And so, oh boy, who, you know, like the mother dudes, like they're saying all these things and they're being really inauthentic with their own energy. And, and, and not really connecting and being fearful of the connection because they're also afraid of the what? The rejection. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to have the chance of connection, you got to also have the possibility of rejection. Ashe, aho, amen. So the rejection part of it is playing a factor. So that's making them not go ahead and, and have their presence. But if, when you get back on your square, and when I talk about the square, I'm talking about your feet, the balls of your feet, the heel. You get back on your feet, back on your square, and you be in your presence and your balls or your ovaries, and you be present. And now, and you see how the last brother, like how he looked in, the, in, her, in her eyes. Now, you got a little, a little cringe with it. I cut it off or whatever, because that was a whole nother thing. He, she was like, oh, I'm starting to lose you, because he, he was a little too intense with it. You know, we, we can make it, you know, again, smiling through the eyes, yo. It's not like a fucking UFC square off. You know what I mean? Um, but with fucking Joe Rogan and, and, and Dana White in the background cheering you on or something, it's like, calm, bring, we need you to bring the intensity level down a little bit because she felt like you about to steal on her or something. She about to catch a fade or something like, calm down. But with, with a certain level of inten intensity, you know what I'm saying? Then you might smile and ease it up. And, and then you might walk off or you might, you know, do another, do something else, play with it, dance with it, you know? Don't, we, don't already know what you're going to do with it. Like, do something new in your body. Do something new with your voice, what you say to her. But all of that has to come from a place of presence. So that's number three, is presence. You good? I like the way yeah. you I like the way you said my name, Bella. Is your name Bell or Bella? Bell. Bella, where, you, where you from, Bell? I'm from Massachusetts. Um, where are you from? So number four is verbal communication. And I put that video of Taekwondo mm -hmm. and, I, and I, I feel for the brother because a lot of what he's trying to share with his audience is like he's trying to get y'all to understand it, the feeling of things ultimately, you know, and, and so many of us when we're still in that masculine energy, we're looking for step by step by step stuff or whatever. And the truth is a lot of what when you see People like him or with, a, you know, th these people who, quote unquote, got it is a feeling thing in the body. And that's what we're trying to try, trying to help you remember that and to embrace it because it's already in you. That's your DNA, your divine natural awareness trying to bring you back to that. So anyway, with that, though, number four is verbal communication and being able to communicate verbally. You know, I have the acronym vibe, voice, introspection, breath and embodiment, you know, so. It's being able to communicate verbally. Where are you from? You might be the first Massachusetts I ever met in my life. I mean, dead serious. I'm not even laughing. You might be the first person from Massachusetts I ever met. So notice the lightheartedness that he's doing. Like he's getting her to laugh and everything. Lightheartedness, again, on the scales of my yacht, is about making your heart as light as a feather. Really? I'm from, I'm from Philly, though. So you don't know anybody, you're from Philly, you don't know anybody from Massachusetts, from Boston? No, no, I, I never, I don't try, I never traveled that much in my life. I still ain't, you know, travel as much as I would like to. Here he's using vulnerability and not using it, it just came out naturally. It's a certain vulnerability if you, if you listen to the tone and everything, it's like he hasn't been able to travel. It's like being stuck in the hood or whatever and not being able to see the world. There's a certain vulnerability that's being expressed there. And that helps people get into the heart space. I feel like I'm in a chapter of my life right now where I'm just locked in. Like I'm on tunnel vision, you know. I got like a, a work now, play later mentality. Now here he's communicating his vision, his purpose. What is it? What is it that he's on this planet about? 
uh, planted to do. And right now he doesn't know, like he's not playing around with it. He's not being distracted. Distracted. Distractions. Notice how the word distractions has ions on it. Exchange of energy. You know, so he's not doing that right now. And he's communicating that to her in a certain way. How old are you? I'm 20. 20. But I do a lot. Like, I'm, I'm mainly like a full-time content creator and all that. I think you do that yourself. Uh, your room looks like a studio, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> you got like leaves falling, hanging from the, the ceiling. And what else is in there? Like, um, No, don't yeah, even tell I me. Got, like, I, I, see, I, I got like a CD wall over there. I got different backgrounds. I, backgrounds. I see it when I go to Massachusetts. Yeah, and, he got yeah. right now. <laughs> and then here he's just play playfully, you know, keeping it moving, you know, dating Kim, K-I-M, keeping it moving, you know. So and that that it honestly is like if you touch a wound being in a certain place and take your hand, it's like then the body begins to yearn for it. If you touch verbally and just touch on something, you got to learn how to just be so charged up that you just just touch on it and just touch on it with your tongue. And then you take it back. And you, you, you tease a little bit. And so, and that was just in a little short couple of minutes or whatever. Those were some, you know, the playfulness, the, 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 the tease and, and the vulnerability, the purpose. That's four things right there in just a short period of time when you are in your God beat, you know, and what is the feminine, the, the, beautiful, the beauty, the power of the feminine is to receive. What is all that energy? If you just got a sun or a star that's shining, but there's no planets that are like Mother Heart, a.k.a. Mother Earth, take the H, put it at the front, now you have heart. If there's nothing, there, there, you, you shining your light out there as a star and there's no planets that can, that can show up with, with life and, and consciousness, you know what I'm saying? So all of that to say that the beauty of the sister uh, in the green, and you see her licking her lips and shit and... and She's she's feeling him. She's feeling him through his verbal communication. She's feeling him in her in, in her body. There's a feeling. There's hormones. There's oxytocin. There's different things going on right in that in that energy exchange through time and space. Philly to Massachusetts, Massachusetts to Philly. And she's feeling him in that way. And that's her power is to be able to receive that. And you as the masculine, the person who's in the masculine energy, knowing, you know, and this could be even for my, my same sex or bisexual viewers out there or whatever, however you get down with your sexuality, your gender, we're talking polarity, right? We're talking energy here. So with that energy exchange, being able to, to, to transmute verbally so that you can be felt. And so... Being able to do, and he did it in a very short amount of time, again, to, to put it in more concise for you, being playful, teasing, you know, just touching on something, vulnerability, and speaking your purpose with passion, your passion with purpose. So that's verbal communication. Hi, my name is Venus. My Instagram is Venus Brand. Um, I'm looking for a tool that's in there that's top that we find. Hi, my name is Tiana. My Instagram is underscore.tiana and I like Nigerians. <laughs> Hi, my name's Fatma. Instagram is Fatma underscore Malik XO and my tag is tall, dark, or light, preferably Jamaican. Hi, my name's Yana Eden and my Instagram is Yana Eden. Um, my top type is dark skin African. Hi, my name's Myra, my Instagram's cash out underscore mills, and my type is tall, dark skin and big. Hi, my name's Vanessa, my Instagram is Vanessa underscore X, and I like tall, dark skin guys. Okay! 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 Your age and what you do for a living? Uh, my name's Emmanuel. I'm 20 years old and I'm a personal trainer and a barber. I'm Manuel, I'm 20 years old, I'm a personal trainer and a barber. Manuel, 20 years old, personal trainer and a barber. Wow. One, two, let me not count. Um, okay, I'm just gonna quickly, I'm just gonna. So number five is body communication. So you see in that video, 
And I didn't show all of it, but I showed a couple because that was the main theme. Like the, the women that you saw saying what kind of, kind of men they want. The, the overall theme was like tall, dark, handsome. Where did we hear that? I mean, have we? Is this not a regular, you know, thing? You know, we see this in our culture at least. I don't know how it is all around the world, but this is kind of like a regular theme, right? So it's all good. You know what I'm saying? What if you don't fit that? It's like, a, it's, don't even worry about all of that. This is what, what did, again, what they say publicly with their heads, and then there's something pubically. So you see that first brother, like, I think he was probably like 5'10 or something. Like, that's like a little bit above average. You know, so he wasn't like, I don't think a six footer or whatever, but he had some height to him. It wasn't, it wasn't even a bow over that. He was slouched. Look at his shoulders, his body posture. And he's not confident. It's his energy, y'all. It's how he feels in his body and what his broadcast is. Keep in mind also that these womb beings are also, some of them are afraid of rejection too. They're afraid if they keep it green that, they, that he might reject them. I'm just scared of getting rejected again. So. You know, so they, they, they feel like in a power space, it's like, and that, that's the power dynamics about this stuff too that's not talked about too, is that when womb beings are afraid of rejection too, so they may feel the need to just go ahead and turn that to red so that they now don't have to even worry about this. Like, oh, I'm powerful, you know, and now I already rejected you. It's like, who can reject who first, right? Me is like, let's get off of all of this, you know? And so, but the body communicates. So we see these different brothers and everything, and these men fail on that video. And now I want you to watch this one. Introducing Israel Adesanya, the last style vendor. Official weight, 183 for style vendor. Now you see how Israel came out and now, granted, if you take that and put it in the first video, like you don't want to be doing too much either, but Israel isn't trying. This motherfucker is feeling some kind of way in his body as an athlete, as a somebody that goes out here and makes a living, you know what I'm saying? And puts his, put his life on the line, really, uh, to step into that motherfucking UFC, uh, 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 you know, octagon or whatever. That's, 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 that's putting your life on the line, right? And but he's feeling some kind of way in his body. And you notice the chick in the background, like you, you saw how she was looking. That was a feeling thing. You see, that's a inner, what I call an inner blush. Like she, she's keeping it together, but there's an inner blush. And then there's, and then that leads to an outer gush. <laughs> and, but you need to be able to pick up on it again. So that's a choosing signal of sorts, right? It's to be able to, she, she, she's feeling that, but guess what? He still got to go over and speak to her. Now, maybe if the circumstances are right, she might go over and talk to him. See, this ties back into number one and, and, and two and even with the resonance. But with that electromagnetic, magnetic, electric, uh, electric yin and yang flip is like to be able to pick up on that she's blushing like that inwardly and that she's feeling it. the other sister when he was walking. You know what I'm saying? She's talking to the, the one in the middle. I don't know if you picked up again the subtleties, but she had to make sure that she she turned her eyes to, to take him in and look at him, you know, and, and look at Israel uh, uh, visually. She still she ain't want to she didn't want to cheat herself on taking the brother in visually. Pick up on those little cues. That might be the only choosing you get. Now she's a really brave woman. If the circumstances or you put a little alcohol, this is why people like the cheat code of alcohol because womb beings feel that it's okay to to now. Whining on that sauce to go speak, you know, speak that speak that mouthpiece a little bit or whatever. That's a cheat code, and for me, it's like you know, E and Molly and all these different substances to get people to to do what is available to us all the time. It's to feel orgasmic, right? So being in your body, you know, I bet if Israel had walked out, you know, yes, he's six foot four and he's dark skin. He he fits some of the what, what it is the criteria that he's saying, right? But it's not really about that. I'm telling you, you could shorten him. 
you could shorten him. And some of the women were still, some of the wound beings were still treated because of his energy and how he's feeling in his body and everything. And I've heard it said before, I'll say it again, the, the, the homie Ram has said it, but basically is that physicality, in other words, if you're a handsome man or you're, you, you, you have the different traits that, 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 that they're looking for in one way, that the wound being is looking for, it buys you maybe another four to six seconds. At the end of the day, the physicality is only going to give you a little bit more time to convey and show and feel and get them out of their head and into their body. Maybe it's time to get to know yourself. Oh, you mean take a look at it? Yeah, take a gander. It's yours, isn't it? Uh, okay, sure. Can I get some privacy? Here goes something. Um, hello? Hey, girl, hey! Oh my god, I have been dying to meet you. Oh, cool. Okay. Hi. I'm I'm Jesse. Well, I'm your genitals. <laughs> What's up? Well, I was wondering when you <laughs> I was no, you go first. Wait, oh, we talked at the same time. Oh, we're having fun. This is fun. On that on that note. Dick is a gift. It's a gift. The sixth way to communicate more centrally it's to be in your genitals, to be connected to your genitals, for you moon beings to feel and be in your breast, right? But if we, let's talk about the genitals. It's like many of us have given that up because of religion, because of guilt, uh, shame, feeling dirty, like all of these different things. And this is something, these are deep things. You may, may think that you're not tripping about it, but then if you really go in yourself, you are. You know, for the womb beings, it's about the smell of the scent sometimes. And if you have if your pH or whatever may be going on and discomfort around that for men, it may be about your dick size or uh, smell scent too for some. And the truth is, is doing all the inner work that you got to do around these things, y'all. So if you want to broadcast and to communicate sensually, You've got to be able to go into your genitals and feel good about it. And you ask some, I remember, I think it was Richard Pryor, either Richard Pryor or Eddie Murphy, said the worst that pussy can be is good. <laughs> the worst that pussy can be is good, you know, at the end of the day, right? So with that being said, it's like, you know, do what you got to do to, you know, and, and do, that's why this channel is called Full Show Health. And notice how heal is in health. Heal. Heal around all those six of these uh, 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 all six of these tenets or, uh, you know, maxims, if you will, and do the inner work and everything. So that's it. That's six. Like I said, there's going to be another three to make nine on my Patreon. If you like this content, I invite you to think about becoming a member of on my Patreon and a subscriber. I definitely appreciate you on that. And, um, uh, you know, also, if you like it, please like, subscribe, share. I'm not on other social media. I, I, I don't rock out with any of those. So uh, your support and, you know, sharing and, and, and getting the video out there, your likes helps to go in a, di a different algorithm. So I appreciate y'all. And again, thank you for coming through. I'm Shofar from Full Show Energy Work and Full Show Health. I do uh, energy work uh, for couples and singles. Me and my lady do it with couples. And then I do it with singles, do coaching for men. Uh, and then I have a book, Sacred Orgasmic Living, so uh, that you can check out as well. And if you like this content, I have a webinar called Sex and S-E-X, Central Emotional Exchange. We have a co-ed one, and then I have one just for men. So the link to that will give you down below. And you can check that periodically. If I haven't put up new dates, just check it again. I will have a new date coming up here soon. Uh, you know, so probably sometime in May, we'll have another one of those. And then also, uh, you can check underneath this, depending on when you see this video through time and space, check the link below. I'll have an ongoing. So you can get on there live, and I, I, I highly recommend the live ones because you get other, you get feedback and questions and stuff from other people being on the Zoom call, right? But I also have, I will have a webinar that's just playing all the time, so you can go check that out. And I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for coming through. Thank you for taking this time and space to enhance yourself, you know, to 
to to keep growing and expanding. Uh, it's a powerful thing. Don't take it. It's healing and growing and becoming a better person. It's no small feat. It's the warrior's path. So I appreciate you coming through. And keep that S-E-X in your life. Keep shining. Keep evolving. And do so exponentially. Thanks.